Let's now talk about custom files that reside in S3 buckets and bringing those into Splunk. For that, the main choice, and really what should be your only choice, is to do SQS-based S3 input. There's a reason why we're pushing SQS-based S3 input going forward. One, it's significantly less load on your Splunk add-on server. With a generic S3, what happens is it has to read the entire bucket, get a list of all the files that are in there, and then basically see only what files have been updated. And if you have a couple of files, not a big deal, but if you have hundreds or thousands of files, that's going to slow the add-on down dramatically. So the SQS-based S3 is significantly faster than that. And so it should be your de facto choice for, uh, for, for pr processing S3 files in Splunk. Sure, it's a little bit of extra work at first, but it's going to dramatically pay off here at the end. Uh, and some other benefits included that it's more real-time. Uh, we talked about more scale. And the process for setting it up is very similar to what we did earlier for CloudTrail. Uh, so it's all laid out right here. And then the other thing that you're going to need is any potential uh, props and transforms to process that data that you're ingesting into Splunk. Lastly, I like to prefix my source types here with AWS colon S3 colon so that if there's any other processing that is required by uh, for the S3 buckets, it's also done by the system. So always prefix your source types with AWS colon S3 colon. So I'm going to walk through the example of having custom files put into S3 buckets. In this case, there's another vendor, Soasta Impulse, that's part of Akamai, that is able to publish or put results from their product into your S3 buckets. So here's what that data might look like, and they put it in .log.gz files. And to go over setting up the SQS-based S3, one of the first things we got to do is create the queue. So here I have a queue already called Soasta Notify, and down here under permissions, I have the ARN uh, that is S3 over here, uh, and anything with the word Soasta in the S3 bucket name. So I already have this created. And then the S3 bucket now, if we go over there, uh, here are S3 buckets, so we'll go to the one in question, go to properties, and then under events, here's my notification. Here's this notification to send uh, basically to an SQS queue named so as to notify that we just referenced. And we're doing object create all uh, so that we'll get notified and process the updates or new additions real quickly. Here is what the data might look like. So this is raw data coming from that utility. And now I want to process that in Splunk. And so the process really, first you want to create an app. So I like to first, before I do anything, the first time I do this is go to apps, manage apps, and then within the screen, create an app. And then I'll create an app where I can put all my customizations in. So I have a custom S3 files app. And then once I create it, I will basically have access to that on the back end. So I can go into my uh, local directory here within that app and do all the props and transforms that I need. So here are the props that I'm going to be using for this particular data set. And with, here's the source type that I'm going to be assigning. So now that I have that in place, I'm ready to go to process this data. To create my new input on the Splunk side, I just come from within the add-on to create new input. And then I got to select custom data type at the bottom here. And I'm going to select SQS-based S3. And from within there, I'll give this a name. Fill in all these blanks. Don't need a sum role. This is in the Oregon region. And then now it's going to fetch all the SQS queues. Find the one I need. There it is. And custom logs. Leave that as a decoder. And then source type. I need to put in here my source type. There it is. So asta-impulse and index default. I'll just leave that as the default and then once that's created it's up and running and so now I can test it by coming back into my S3 console right now I just have these three directories so now why don't I go ahead and upload a couple of other directories here let's take these three and just drag them upload and what I should start seeing here momentarily are events uh, flowing in so here I have a, a filter to just put in or search to put in uh, certain fields in a table. And here we go. I waited about a minute or so, uh, just under a minute, and here are events now that are in those files that I just dragged in over. And some of the things that I've specified in my uh, transforms.conf, including parsing a different host file or host based on the IP address in the source field here, uh, those are all getting processed. And then we can see also events are still streaming in here uh, from, from those files that were just added.
here is now the same search, but now with geostats command. And let's uh, search over all time. And here we go. Now we can see, in this case, we're doing latitude, longitude, count by user agent type, and visualizing where people are. So most people here are desktop. Uh, keep zooming in to get more granularity. So here in California, this part, you got mostly desktops, uh, as well as over here. So most people are desktop with a few here more that are have a higher percentage of tablet or mobile.